Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make apple turnovers and this is what they look like. What we have is flaky layers of a buttery crisp puff pastry and then inside we have a delicious apple filling. So the first thing we need to do is to make our apple filling. So you will need one pound, which is 450 grams, and you wanna use a firm textured apple. I'm using Granny Smith today because the reason you want a firm texture is set so that when we cook the apples, they don't like turn into mush, they kind of hold their shape. So a pound or 450 grams is about two large apples. So what we need to do is peel, core, and cut them into bite-sized chunks. So I'll just show you how I do it. You may do it a little different at home. Uh, some people like to use an apple uh, peeler and then peel the uh, outside. That's that's one way of doing it. I'll show you how I do it. So I just cut my apple in half and then on either side I just cut straight down on the side of the core there. Try to get as close as possible and then across the bottom. And then I just take a knife and I just peel it by hand with my knife like so. If you have a little bit of peel left I mean on your up don't worry about it I think it just adds flavor and then what I do is just cut that and then just into you know bite-sized chunks okay so there we go so now in a saucepan just place your chunks of apple along with I'm adding two tablespoons of water you could use apple juice if you have some in the house and then we need to sweeten our apples depending on how you know tart tasting your apples I'm putting a quarter of a cup of 55 grams of light brown sugar if your apples are not that tart you could back that off to like half of that amount I'll just leave that up to you and then I like to add a little bit of ground cinnamon, just a pinch, which is an eighth of a teaspoon. If you don't like cinnamon, you can just leave that out. So now what we are going to do is cook this over medium heat until when I pierce the, an apple with a, a knife, it, it's tender, you want nice and tender. Now some of the apples will kind of break down and get a little bit of mushy, but overall, you know they're going to keep their shape if at any time when you're cooking your apples if you find find that um, they're getting dry you could add a little more water or apple juice because really it's hard to know how much water is in your apples until you start cooking them and then then you can tell once this comes up to a simmer you could put the lid on that will quicken the cooking but keep checking and stirring and I find it takes maybe 10 minutes to cook the apples down to where I want them so I'm going to check so, as you can see that looks pretty good so what I'm going to do is just take a knife insert it yes they're nice and tender take it off of the heat and then I like to add a little bit of lemon juice, just like a teaspoon. And that will prevent the apples from um, discoloring. So just stir that. And then I'm going to put it in the bowl. As you can see, I still have quite a bit of juice. If I was doing this again, I could maybe even cut back the uh, amount of water a little. So there we have it. That's our apple filling. Now. What we're going to have to do is chill this, get it nice and cold. So I'm just going to let it cool down, cover it, and place it into the refrigerator. Now, what you could do, and what I do most of the time, is I make the apple filling the day before I want to make the apple turnovers. So that way that step's done and I don't have to wait a couple hours. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and when we come back we will start rolling out our puff pastry. So now we are going to roll out our puff pastry. You will need a half a pound, which is 225 grams of puff pastry. Now you can 
you can use the commercial uh, puff pastry, but I'm using my homemade Blitz puff pastry, and I do recommend that you try making it. So you can go to the joyofbaking.com website. I do have a recipe along with a video, and it really isn't that hard to make. Maybe the first time, you know, there's a little bit of technique, but after that, I'm telling you, you'll never go back to the, the store bought. So, um, and w the, uh, the homemade uh, Blitz Puff pastry recipe actually makes three times this amount. And whenever you're cutting your puff pastry, on, you wanna, there's this, uh, the fold here, you wanna cut your puff pastry this way. So, if you're using the commercial one that is frozen, I would defrost it overnight in your refrigerator, same as if you froze your um, homemade, defrost it overnight in the refrigerator. And then flour your counter, flour your puff. This recipe makes six uh, four and a half inch uh, turnovers. I often double that recipe, you could triple it, but I only use work with this amount of puff because it does tend to warm up so this is a good amount to work with so for six four and a half inch i am going to roll my pastry nine inches by 13 and a half i'm going to do it a little more than that because we do trim the edges but that is your basic size nine by 13 and a half which is 23 by about 34 centimeters Always make sure your counter, move it around so it doesn't stick. If you find when you're rolling your puff, if it springs back too much, then put, stop, put it into the refrigerator and let it chill a little. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So you will need a ruler for this. Nine inches, 23 centimeters, that's about right. Roll it just a little more, this one. And we want, what did I say, 13 and a half, which is about 34. And a little, a little long there, but that's okay. So now, when you do puff, you have to trim the edges. And that way when the, uh, our tuner turnovers bake, the edges will kind of pop up, you know, because you have all those flaky layers and you have to, so you have to um, trim the edges to allow that. So I use my ruler. I'm going to go right across the top. That's why when I said you need to roll your pastry just a little more than the, the size I said, is so we can trim. And then I'll just measure that. Yeah, we're right at, so I'm just going to, just a little tiny bit off. Now I'm using a pizza wheel. If you don't have one of these, you could use a knife. But when you use a knife, what you want to do, I'll do it here, is you go cut straight down. Don't like saw, you want to go straight, you don't want to tear your puff. So it's straight down like that. But a pizza wheel is great for this. Now I, uh, I'm going to be, let me see here, and a little extra here. This is 12. So, start trim. Use your ruler as a guide. So now I'm I'm going to, this is my long length, I'm going to divide it into four and a half, which is about 11 centimeters. If you're not quite, if yours is a little less, you can make them like a little smaller. <laughs> I find for this amount of pastry, this is about the uh, right size. Because you want you to roll your pastry fairly thin because as I said, puff does puff <laughs> in the uh, oven. And then I'm just going to divide this in half, four and a half. OK, 
Okay. So now you need a parchment lined baking sheet. Put your squares. And then I'm going to cover it and I'm going to put this in, put them into the refrigerator. They're, they're quite soft from rolling and we want to firm them up. You know, maybe uh, 15 to 30 minutes. And while they're chilling, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius. And then when we come back, we will assemble our apple turnovers. We're now ready to assemble our apple turnovers. You will need one large egg and have that at room temperature. And then I'm just going to whisk that because we are going to egg wash the tops before we put them in the oven. And I also have my apple filling already and my chilled squares of puff. You know, you I normally double this recipe because I figure if I'm going to go to all this work, I'm going to at least make a, a few. And you can freeze them. I will tell you about that, which is nice. So we are ready to take, I just put like a little bit of flour down. And then I'm going to egg wash just the corners very lightly. And then, now this is, what you want to put is a tablespoon, just a tablespoon of the apple filling. I know you're going to say, that doesn't look like enough. It is. You don't want it squishing out when they bake. So this is one of those times when less is, is right. I tend to, I mean, I even tend to overfill them. And you pay for that. So now end to end, put it over, and then what I do, my fingers, I'm pressing it's my end fingers here, lightly down to get the air out, and then seal, press down the edges, so there, and then I take, I've got like a bamboo skewer, you could use some, and I take my two fingers, and then I press in like that to seal. Makes a nice design and also it lets that puff when we when it's in the oven lift up and separate. So you can see all those wonderful layers. So there we have it. It's nice and sealed. Then so that one's done. I just use Transfer it over like so, and then just carry on. <laughs> Once you get the hang of it, it really goes quite quickly. So there we have. Now what we want to do is lightly brush the tops. Don't brush the edges of the puff because we want to be able to uh, puff up. We don't want to do that, brush that, but everything else on top gives a nice, helps with browning, nice shine. And then what I do is take a sharp knife and just do two slits that let the, the steam escape. And then I take some sparkling sugar you could just use granulated white or you don't even have to. But I kind of like the look of the sparkling sugar on top. And plus it adds a little bit of crunch. So there. To the rest. So at this point, I mean, we're going to bake them off. You don't have to. You could put them into the refrigerator to chill for a bit. or. What I often do is do it to this point and then put this whole sheet into the freezer, let them freeze solid and then take them out and then put them into a plastic freezer bag or a container. And then you can freeze these like, like this for about three months and then you just bake them off frozen. So it's a great do ahead uh, thing for breakfast or any time. So now 
First thing, as soon as you put them into the oven, if you have a convection oven, a fan oven like I do, reduce your oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. If you have an electric, uh, like have a regular oven with the heat source on the bottom, then reduce your oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius. And then for baking time, everyone's oven is a little different. I find around 35 to 40 minutes. You got to, the one thing you got to be careful with, with puff pastry is we tend to take it out a little too early. It kind of looks done, but then when we cut into it later, there, there can be a little gummy inside. So you want to bake these until they're golden brown on top and check the bottom, you know, really kind of do it a little beyond maybe what you're comfortable with. Of course, you don't want to burn them, but golden brown. So 35 to say 40 minutes. Okay, so our apple turnovers are now done. Put your baking sheet on a wire rack and see nice and puffed on the edges and then I turn them over nice golden brown on the bottom I'm gonna let them cool just a little here and then transfer them to the wire rack to cool like completely we don't want to eat them right now because we will burn our mouth with that hot apple filling and then when we come back we will try one so it's cooled down cut into it Apple turnovers are, are excellent, freshly made. But you know, you could cover them and store them overnight and then just either eat them at room temperature or you could just pop them back into the oven for a few minutes just to recrisp them and heat it up. So look at that, you got all the layers, apple filling in the center. <laughs> what a treat. <laughs> um, you have the sparkling sugar on the top, provides a nice crunch. And then, really, who doesn't like puff pastry? All those flaky layers, through the outside is nice and crisp, buttery tasting. Make your own, your own. you'll really appreciate that. And then the apple filling. You know, just a little sweet, a little tart with the Granny Smith apples. Yeah, they are so good. <laughs> Have them for breakfast, put them in the lunch, any time of the day. So try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.